All right, we're here at the range now. I'd like to go over some of the rimfire replicas we've developed. As we were talking down here in the seminar earlier, this was our very first replica. This is a copy of the 1873 single action. We did it in 22 long rifle. And for a beginner's uh, handgun, this is a perfect choice. It's great for your first shot programs. This little handgun retails for around $189. It's effective, it's accurate, and it's affordable. Uh, so it's a great product for people to get started with and have fun plinking. Our next lineup in the, in the rimfire replicas was uh, 1911. Uh, Cap Firearms was the first ones to come out with a dedicated 1911-22, and we have several models. This specific model is the new Citadel 1911 uh, Hogue model. It's exclusively distributed by Lexi International. With this 1911, there's a couple of characteristics I'd like to point out to you. We've had a lot of issues with the 1911, people complaining about malfunctions with it. And we have to remind them constantly that this has the very same characteristics as the, an actual 1911 in 45. Uh, for the people who've never shot a 1911 before, or may be more familiar with shooting some of the more modern uh, semi-automatics, such as the, uh, the Glock or the XD uh, platforms, they may grip this pistol a little different from what they do uh, normally. We have to remind them that you grip this with a firm grip just like you do in 1911. Otherwise, you have a very high probability of a uh, malfunction. It may not uh, feed correctly because with, if you break your wrist or break the elbow while you're firing, it may absorb some of the energy and not allow that slide to move all the way uh, back like it should, which can cause a uh, malfunction. Uh, there's been uh, numerous occasions where we've been on the range, people have some issues with it. We pick up, a, take their load, charge the pistol up. As you can see, when this pistol is handled correctly with a firm grip, it functions flawlessly. However, quite often we have people who don't quite understand the, the grip of the 1911. And when I speak of breaking your wrist, I'm speak, talking about when you're shooting, you're, you allow your wrist to break and be real loose and not a firm, firm hold. Likewise with the elbow. And when you do that, and if you don't have a, the correct, you don't have to have a death grip, but a, a firm grip as if you were shooting a 45. If I shoot it real loose, as you can see, we just had a malfunction. What, it, what that caused was the round did not chamber because, because I didn't have a firm grip, the slide did not go back far enough to actually cycle around. And that would cause a, a malfunction or a misfeed, which is, is not uncommon with a 1911 if you're not doing it correctly. But when you do it with a, a firm grip, and another thing I'd like to point out also is make sure you use your, the, a good quality ammunition. I know a lot of people like to go to the discount warehouses, discount stores, and buy bulk pack ammunition that's a lot less expensive. If you find something that works well in your firearm, that's great. But don't take it out on the firearm if it doesn't, because quite often the problem could be the ammunition. At Kappa Firearms, we test exclusively with CCI Mini Mag. It may cost just a little bit more, but the quality of the performance we get from the firearm with the quality ammunition uh, are results I guarantee you'll be much happier with. With that, I'd like to go down here and discuss, uh, show you one of our other products we have. The next handgun we had in our Rimfire replica, it's one of the most recent ones we've built, is the, the M922. This particular handgun is a copy of the M9 that's used by the U.S. military forces. It has the same manual arms, same configuration as an actual uh, M9 that was made by Beretta, uh, with the exception it does, it's dedicated 22 long rifle. It has a 10 round magazine. We get often, or often we're asked, why don't we have a 15 round magazine? With a rim fire, because of the configuration of the cartridge, it's very difficult to get anything beyond 10, 10 rounds in a, a single stack uh, magazine for a handgun. We just can't double stack it like you would a nine millimeter because it's rimless. So with that, we are restricted to a 10 round capacity. Other than that, just about everything about this pistol is an exact duplicate of the original M9, and makes a great training product. With that, we're gonna to move to some more long gun replicas. First product we came out with was the M422 uh, conversion for the 
uh, AR platform. This particular uh, rifle is set up with a, uh, with a scope, it's a flat top design, and it's uh, been fit to a, uh, a mil spec uh, lower receiver uh, that's not unlike any other AR uh, that's on the market. With this M4 uh, conversion upper, it's a, it's, a, it's a simple swap with just replacing the, pulling the pins and replacing the upper. You can train with your AR platform with much less expensive 22 ammunition. And the accuracy of these are phenomenal. It is not unusual for us to get sub one inch groups at 100 yards with 22 standard velocity. Uh, I feel we have probably the most accurate 22 conversion on the market. Uh, we have had um, several inline uh, design changes to make this a better functioning, a, a better product, because unfortunately we have no control of what lower they're putting it on, and even though it's a mil spec lower, the variations could be uh, pretty wide. So with that, we've been working on methods so that this would be uh, able to fit on just about any of the AR platforms and, and function correctly. Our next product, it was a natural progression. We had the half of it already finished. We had the upper done, it's performing great. So we came up with a complete uh, AR carbine. This little rifle has uh, some specific characteristics some people don't realize why we did it. As you can see, it appears to be a classable stock. It's actually a fixed stock. Import restrictions do not allow us to import with a classable stock, so we did a fixed stock that looks like a classable stock. Gives you that cool factor. We've done a few other things also. Uh, our barrels are a solid steel barrel. They're 1 and 16 twist, dedicated for a 22 long rifle. Our flash hiders are not threaded on. Uh, there are some states that have restrictions for threaded barrels. So what we did is uh, just a little Allen screw will attach a, a fake flash hider. The grooves are not cut all the way through, so this is not considered a flash hider, but it looks like the real thing. If you'd like to have a, an actual flash hider or if you have the uh, NFA uh, capability or you've got the, uh, a legal suppressor you'd like to put on one, to thread these barrels as simple as running a half 28 die down it, now you've got a threaded barrel. The dimension of the barrel is perfect so that you can, uh, they're ready to thread. And that way you can go ahead and run your uh, suppressor or any type of flash hider you would like on it. This little carbine has been proven to be one of the most accurate AR platform uh, 22s on the market. Uh, and performance wise, uh, I, I just can't speak high enough on how well this little rifle will perform, as you'll see. Now, as you see with this, the dust locked back on the rear on the last shot. Uh, all the manual of arms with this uh, firearm is exactly the same as standard AR, with the exception of the bolt hold back. Once it's held back, when you remove the magazine, it does release the bolt. When this is characteristic of most 22 conversions for the AR platforms. Uh, again, very accurate, very reliable, very dependable rifle. Now, I'll save the, I feel, probably the best for last. This is probably one of the most exciting products we've developed in the last several years. You look at this rifle, and you would think that this is a, the very iconic M1 30 caliber carbine. It looks very much like it, but it's a 22 caliber version. We've gone, taken great pains to make this as close to authentic detail re reproduction of the original M1 carbine. Our wood stock is totally interchangeable with the M1 carbine. We have a synthetic stock version that has the very same combat profile, and that's interchangeable with an M1 carbine. Our rear sight, uh, we use a polymer sight to keep the cost down, but it is an identical copy of the uh, M1 carbine sight. If you prefer to go with an all steel sight from a, uh, either aftermarket or original, drift this side out and replace it with original sight, there's absolutely no problem with that. Even uh, items like the bayonet uh, lug the, and the bayonet housing, uh, we use a polymer and because for import restrictions in certain states we can't have a bayonet lug. So this is a fake bayonet lug, it does not work. If you'd like to have a functioning bayonet lug, you can take an actual aftermarket or military surplus bayonet lug and replace it without any issue. 
the rifle is from 10 feet away, you, most people can't tell that it wasn't a 30 caliber carbine. Shooting and characteristics of this rifle is identical to the 30 caliber carbine, only to 22. As we discussed in the seminar, for loading this, the M1, I recommend pulling the bolt back and locking it back. There's a small detent fan you push down just like the M1 has. Hold, and you can hold your bolt back for safety, insert the magazine, and with that magazine fully seated, you just pull the bolt back and release, and you're loaded and ready to fire. Okay, you fired last round, we lock the bolt to the rear, push your detent, remove the magazine, and you're ready for your next magazine to fire. You know, when we developed this, this iconic piece of U.S. history, it was a perfect companion to the 1911. And we designed it so you can change surplus components so you can personalize it and make it a match to your 30 caliber carbine that you have or the one you wish you always had, always wish you had. One thing I'd like to discuss about this rifle and any blowback design rimfire rifle is the possibilities of malfunction with the ammunition. Typically with a rimfire platform, they've always had a closed breech, the top is closed with a side exit. If the cartridge fails to totally go into chamber, we have what's sometimes called uh, an out of battery ignition. Sometimes that may just be a DNF and nothing happens. Other times, because that cartridge is not fully seated into the chamber, you have a, a very rare possibility of a case rupture. If it happens on your typical 22, usually you don't think anything about it. You hear a little louder pop and there's no change. You may have a slight malfunction, but you, but you drive on. With M1 carbine, we did stick to a historic design and it's an open breech design. And for that reason, should you ever have a ammunition malfunction, there is a rare possibility that if there was a rupture, that some of the debris could come back into your face. And for that reason, we highly recommend, as if when you're shooting any firearm, make sure you're wearing safety glasses. I'd like to point out also, that this rifle uh, is exclusively available by Legacy Sports International in Reno, Nevada. And uh, available through any of your firearm dealers or uh, wholesalers. And with that, I'd like to close. I'd like to thank you all for visiting Kiapa at the range. See you next time.